Hey guys, today we're going to learn how to solve the 4x4 Rubik's Cube. The first step in solving the 4x4 Rubik's Cube is to solve all of our white center pieces and place them at the bottom of our cube. Let's get started. First, let's find one center piece. We've gone over here. Now let's find another white center piece. We've gone down over here. Our next step is to match them both up to form a line. This is a simple intuitive step which does not require any algorithms whatsoever. So to do this, in our case, all we have to do is shift these two layers upward. And we form now what's called a bar. A bar is when we have two center pieces matched together in a line, either vertically or horizontally. Now let's make another separate white bar. So let's look for another center piece, and we've gone over here. And we've got another center piece over here. Now we have to match up these two center pieces intuitively. Let's do it. So we just have to move these two layers upward. And now we have two bars, one bar over here and one bar over here. Our next step is to match these two bars up together. So let's do it. In our case, what we have to do is we have to move this face around. And next, as you can see, we have one bar over here and one bar over here. Our next step is simple. Just move these two layers upward. And as you can see, we finished our entire step and solved all of our white center pieces. The next step in solving the 4x4 is to solve all of our yellow center pieces and place them at the top of our cube. We have one yellow center piece over here and one yellow center piece over here. Let's match them both up, forming a bar. To do that, let's simply move these two layers upward. But as you can see, we've actually dislodged our previously formed bar over here at the bottom of our cube. This has now been moved upward, so we have to make sure that we don't destroy our previously solved pieces when making a new bar. In order to preserve these pieces, all we have to do is shift this face around and then pull these dislodged pieces back into its original place. Right now we've kept our already solved pieces intact and kept our yellow bar on top of the cube. Now let's form another yellow bar. We have another centerpiece over here and another centerpiece over here. Let's match them both up together, forming a bar. In our case, we have to orient them together correctly in order to form a bar. So all we have to do is shift this face around and then move these two layers upward. As you can see, we've now created a second yellow bar. Our next step is to take this bar and place it up over here. We have to remember to place our bar up here on top of the cube without dislodging our previously solved pieces. To do this, here is what we can do. Simply shift the top face around so that both the yellow bars are facing each other. Next, move these two layers upward and then twist the top face around and then pull the two layers downward. Now what we've done is we've solved the entire set of yellow center pieces and we've solved the entire set of white center pieces. Our next step is to solve three sets of white edge pieces. Edge pieces have two colors. This means that these colors will be facing outward from the sides of our cube. On a Rubik's cube, the colors have a specific orientation and order. We have to remember that when we solve these edge pieces, there's a specific order in which each of the edge pieces must be placed. That order is as follows. Blue, orange, green, and red. We must have a really good idea of this order when solving this step in order to make sure that we can still solve the following steps afterward. Now that we know the correct order of colors in our Rubik's cube, we can start solving all of our edge pieces on the cube. Just one last thing to remember is that we're not solving all four of our sets, we're only solving three sets of edge pieces, leaving the fourth one completely unsolved until the next step. Now let's start solving our edge pieces. Let's start off with blue. So here's one blue and white edge piece over here. Let's find another blue and white edge piece. We've gone over here, blue and white. Let's just match them up together. There we go, that's simple. Now let's place this set of edge pieces right next to our center pieces. There we go. Next, let's solve our orange edge pieces. We have one set over here. This piece is white and orange, and this piece is also white and orange. We have to match them both up together. So first, let's put this down onto one of the middle rows. So I'm just gonna twist this downward. Next, we can match up the pieces. So we just have to move these layers around. There we go. We have them both matched up in a row. Now let's place them right next to our blue edge pieces. So here are our blue edge pieces. 
we can place them on the next side, like so. Right now we have blue and orange solved. We're going to leave this set completely unsolved, so we're going to solve this set. And this set is red, so let's find our red edge pieces. Here's one red edge piece over here. And here's another red edge piece over here. Let's match both those edge pieces together. So first, once again, I'm going to put this down onto the middle row. There we go. Now this piece is back down onto the middle row and we can match up the pieces. There we go. We have the pieces matched up in a row and now we can place them in its correct spot. Perfect, we now have three sets of complete edge pieces. Now we can move on to our next step, which is solving all of the other colored center pieces. Our next step is to solve all of these center pieces on the other faces. Now, when we do this step, we have to remember to not disrupt our already solved edge pieces on the bottom of the cube. This is why we have one set of unsolved edge pieces. All of the twisting of the faces will be done over here where we haven't got any edge pieces to disrupt. Now let's start solving our center pieces. Let's start off with blue. We have one blue center piece over here. Now let's match it up with this blue center piece over here. To do that, I'm just gonna shift this face around and then twist these two layers over here. Now we formed one blue bar. Let's turn this blue bar over to make it horizontal. Now let's find another blue edge piece. We've got one over here. And the next blue edge piece is over here. Let's match them both up together. There we go. That's simple and we formed a bar. Now let's twist it over to the place where there are no pieces to disrupt. And then I'm just gonna shift this face around, just turn it, and now this bar is also horizontal. Right now you can see that we've got this bar over here and this bar over here, and we can match them up together. There we go, just like that. And now we've solved one of our faces. We can just now align this with our blue edge pieces, and we've got this part of the step solved. Now we can solve the rest of the center pieces just like that. Just the one thing you should remember is that you have to keep the colors in the correct order if you want to solve the next steps. Once you've solved all of these center pieces, we can now solve our last set of white edge pieces. Let's do it. In my case, the pieces are white and green. Now we have to put the pieces together and it's a completely intuitive step your cube might look completely different to mine. But the basic idea is exactly the same. Just try and put them together without disrupting the other pieces. Let me show you how I'm gonna tackle this situation. I have one piece over here and one piece over here. I'm gonna shift this piece downward and I'm going to move this piece upward. Next, I'm going to move this piece downward as well. But first, I'm going to move this aside in order to make sure that I don't disrupt any other pieces. Now, as you can see, both of these pieces are down on this row. I now have to put them together without destroying my other pieces. Let's do it. So I'm going to tilt my cube this way, so now I can, can move my cube around better. Next, I'm going to move this upward. I'm going to move this face down, so now this is out of the way. I'm then going to twist this face out of the way put this back, and then my next step is simple. All I have to do is twist these two layers back down. It may seem really complex and overwhelming, but you'll get it as you try and solve it intuitively. But now what we've done is we've actually managed to put these pieces together. Now that we've matched up these two edge pieces together, our next step is simple. Just move this face downward and match up these edge pieces with the center piece and twist this entire face downward. And then let's just twist our dislodged face back up. Now we've solved all of the edge pieces on the bottom of our cube and every single set of center pieces on the entire cube. Now all we have to do to solve the cube is to solve it like a 3x3. Three three. However, you might want to watch the rest of this video because there's something coming up called a parity. A parity is like an abnormality in the cube, a case which doesn't occur on the 3x3 three three, but does on the 4x4. Four so there are specific algorithms for tackling specific parodies, and we'll be talking about these next. What you see before you over here is the OLL parody. In the OLL parody, what happens is we can see that all of these pieces are faced upward and oriented correctly. However, we have this layer of pieces which is oriented incorrectly. We have to flip these pieces over so the yellow side faces up. 
Now to do this, what we have to do is we have to do an algorithm. Now for this algorithm to work, we have to place these outward facing yellow pieces towards us in this type of an orientation. Now, before we do our algorithm, this is how it goes. R, U2, X, R, U2, R, U2, R prime, U2, L, U2, R prime, U2, R, U2, R prime, U2, R prime. And yes, that is an incredibly long algorithm, but we'll go through it step by step. So this is how it works. R, U2, and X basically means we have to take the bottom of the cube and we have to face it towards us. So we can place the bottom of the cube and it face to, faces towards us. And once again, R, U2, R, U2, R prime, U2, L, U2, R prime, U2, R, U2, R prime, U2, R prime. And now what we see on the cube is that these flipped pieces are now flipped correctly in the correct orientation. What we're seeing over here is the PLL parity. In the PLL parity, we can see that we have these two pieces over here, which needs to be over here, and these two green pieces over here, which should be over here. So if this were to be a solvable three by three situation, we would have also had another set of other colored pieces over here. So we could switch all three around and turn solving the cube. However, this is not present. So what we have to do is we have to do an algorithm in order to create that situation where we can solve it using a three by three algorithm. So to do that, we have to do an algorithm and the algorithm goes like this. 2R2, U2, 2R2, U2, 2R2, U2. What the 2R2 means is that we're actually solving for the second layer within the right. So this is the first right and this is the second right. So this is a right which we're going to be manipulating. So let's do the algorithm. 2R2, so you can see we've moved the right, uh, the second right two times, and then U2, and then 2R2, and now this is a double layer U2, 2R2, a double layer U2. As you can see now, our algorithm is finished and we have a solvable situation using our three by three algorithms. So over here we can see we have one, two, three discolored areas in which we can switch them around using a simple three by three algorithm. In this case, it is this three by three algorithm over here. And now, as you can see, we've solved the four by four Rubik's cube and we've negated all the parodies. Congratulations, you just solved the four by four Rubik's cube. Now if you like this video, please like and subscribe and I'll see you in our next video.